big reasons why we see SK Telecom still leaving Faker in here for game number two as we move into the picks and bans. And there's a Cassie, the oh, uh, ca uh, wow. Callista ban, rather, coming up from SK Telecom. So they're yeah. actually going to give Najin the option to ban all three of those mid laners if they want to. I'm a bit surprised to see that. SK Telecom has been. Uh, they don't ban Callista on blue side. I wonder if they're going to do. Oh, okay. I was wondering if it was going to be a first pick Gragas, perhaps, but no, banning that away from Najin. So what's the plan here? What's the idea? I'm SK very has. curious about SK Telecom's draft now. Bang's going to first pick Vayne and show OQ how it's done. There you go. Damn, that would be <laughs> pretty bold. Yep. But then they switch over to a top lane Vayne from our end. Cassiopeia ban. And so I'd imagine it would have to be the LeBlanc ban. No, uh, SKT banning out LeBlanc. Wow, what are they doing this time? Yeah, this is a bit odd. I'm, I'm really surprised to see SK Telecom's draft strategy. Maybe they really want to first pick Bard? Perhaps? <laughs> no, like Dylan, that that's you. You <laughs> want them to first pick Bard. Don't confuse their desires with your desires. My desires are my only analysis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Alistar. Alistar. Oh, that's, that makes sense. Makes sense to ban that against Wolf. Uh, they could first pick a Thresher. They could first pick a Sejuani. Uh, Rek'Sai as well, of course. We'll see what they decide to go with. Uh, or the Nar. That would be a little bit of a hmm. strange first pick coming in. Uh, just because there are still obviously a lot of options for Najin up against that Nar. And they left the Nautilus up this time too, which Najin almost certainly will pick in their first round of the draft on the red side. Yeah. We've seen that from them last week, and because it's a flex pick for them, it's a great, it's a great pick for the red side in general. So first pick Sejuani for SK Telecom, wanting to keep that away from Watch. So they've they've taken away Gragas and Sejuani from Watch, and and that could cause uh, some problems for Najin. Watch hovering over one of his uh, favorite junglers, Nocturne. We used to see so many Nocturne games from Watch back in the day. Yeah, but not. Going same with Elise. To, same with Elise. I think Rek'Sai and Thresh are the safer pickups right now, so oh, it won't be the Nautilus priority this week. You know, uh, interestingly enough, I never thought I'd really be saying this, but Varus is open for SK Telecom. He was banned against him in game number one. So if SKT wants to wants to play that, that champion that is apparently ban-worthy, they have a chance. Well, if it's a mid lane one, though, you don't really have to ban it on them on blue side because Varus is only useful in certain matchups. So you don't want to put something with that low amount of mobility unless you can counter pick with it on the red side. You want it to be a last pick. I see. Yeah, typically speaking. Let's see. Now Wolf actually has uh, one of his highest win rates on Janna this season. I believe he only has one loss ever. I was looking at stats today. Professionally, yeah, John Lucian. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Lulu for Faker this game. Yeah, they have so much protection for this Lucian already. They love to play these pick compositions. Yep, makes sense around the Lucian, and especially because they're on blue side and they're going to have to blind pick their mid laner. Just go for something that's going to have a large chance of not being assassinated by something from Goong's champion pool here, Nar and Jinx, and other late game setup for Najini Empire. Well, you're kind of laughing, but is it safe? Is it safe to go with this Jinx against a team like SKT? Apparently they think it is. Yeah, they have I a mean, really strong lane. That Jinx Thresh lane has always been incredibly powerful. Yeah, but then you have to think, well, OQ is no depth. Well, OQ possesses some of the best laning in this league, so if anybody can pull it off with a Rek'Sai in the jungle for a gank, it's going to be OQ and Pure. Uh, I think that he'll be just fine on that champion. And now, Final SK Telecom picks. thinking about what they can run with here. Remember last week they did go with Ezreal, another very safe blind pick in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. With that escape and also the ability to affect the map and control the minion waves and the poke power. So they could go with Nunu Ezreal here. Yeah, that would seem well, pretty Well, no, they, uh, they already have a jungler, so the Nunu would be top Sejuani. Awkward. Top Sejuani. We've, we've talked about this. But they could go with the Ezreal. 
They, they could blind pick the Varus for Faker do it, with do it. the Nunu. Yes, I believe it has been locked in. All right. Wow. You know, the thing is, though, to be completely fair, yeah, it's probably mid lane Varus, but could be mid lane Lucian. I just have questions, such as, what happens if he picks Zed right now? Oh, come on, Goong. Never play <laughs> that guy never plays Zed. I don't ever think he's ever had a good game on Zed. Certainly not Goong. Just Varus with his poke. Yeah, he's great against champions like Cassidin that have to come up to melee the wave and don't have good mobility early, but Varus is a champion that can get all in very effectively, or you can just do that. Yeah, just which is back. map match poke for poke. That's also a legitimate option. Goong has never been a good Yasuo player, though. Yeah, and does Windwall block a Hail of Arrows? That's what I'm wondering. I suppose it, Lulu would be better. Yeah, Lulu's, yeah. Lulu's a very safe choice. You can whimsy your way out of those difficult situations. You've got a shield. Yep. You have poke of your own. So I don't really know about this Varus pick <laughs> in, under these circumstances. I, I, yep. I think it was smart of players like Power of Evil to pick it as a lane counter pick, but to blind pick it, Bold. Things Faker does. Uh, yeah, Things Faker does. I think this is his first professional game on Varus. I will double check that real quick. I would be it surprised would be <laughs> if it wasn't. I would also be surprised if it, was, if it wasn't. Yeah. Well, either way, we're about to see Faker play Varus in the mid lane. Interesting. I think I would remember it, considering I have, in fact, seen every single game that Faker has ever played professionally. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone would know, we would, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there have been a lot of games, so I'll take a look at that. In the meantime, a lot of AD buffing. Marin will be on the top lane, Nunu. Now, that's just an annoying matchup. He's incredibly difficult to kill in lane. He's a bit of a lane bully uh, because he has so much sustain via that consume, and he just constantly snowballs you and makes your life a living hell. So very passive pickup, but this should be a fun double AD composition. However, no AP damage late game at all. So Najin can itemize very efficiently, and if they can make the late game, they really shouldn't have too much of a problem just rolling over SK Telecom. Yep. So it's all about the earth, the mid-game siege for SKT. Well, it's bound to be an interesting one either way, guys. SKT looking for the 2-0 with a mid Varus. Let's see if they can do it. It's time to get in the game. Go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, SK Telecom versus Naj in the Empire. I and can good. officially confirm okay. <laughs> that this is Faker's first ever game professionally playing Varus. And That's it was right. banned. Hey, it's a nice drawing of SKT. That's like if SKT were those like, you know, kids' toys. They're kind of like Legos, but they're a little <laughs> bit bigger so they don't choke on them. That's like the SK Telecom Duplo? version. Duplo blocks, that's what it was, yeah. When I was a kid, see, I had the Legos, but my younger siblings, they had Duplo. I see. Yep, yeah, that's right. Those noobs. <laughs> Get on my level, they Duplo were, users. <laughs> they, they actually were noobs to being alive, so I guess that's, that's fair. Life noobs. <laughs> well, Faker and his kind of oily demon pants are going to see if they can take out uh, Najin. Varus is, I'm not going to lie, Varus's pants have always disturbed me. Well, I mean, his arm is turned into a bow. I don't really know how he does anything useful. Because it's not like just not having an arm. You actually have this giant crossbar in the way of everything you do. Like, how do you sleep without rolling over on that? That would be, like, really uncomfortable, man. Well, instant instant uh, pull-up bar, though. You just find anything, you just put it up there between them, use the other hand, just work out, man. That's why I... That's why he's uh, so cut. The one-handed pull-up. All those pull-ups, yeah. Damn. I know. Pretty impressive. But of course, really, when you think about it, the only ar the only article of clothing Varus is wearing is like that scarf. Yeah. Disturbing. Yeah. I know. Right? It's a, it's a headband, I think. Is it? I think it's a. Headband. Oh yeah, you're right. It's a headband. Yeah. He's got to look cool, not stay warm. He's already naked. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> His demon pants keep him warm, Monty. Don't worry. Do you know the story of Varus? 
I, I don't. He was guarding this thing, and uh, then some like a bad army came to his village to get the thing, and they were killing all stuff. So he took the thing, and he defended his village, but in the process became corrupted by it. And uh, it was a bow, I guess. I guess that's what the thing was. Sounds and, about uh, the quality of writing that I expect from Riot Games. And so then he went to the League of Legends. <laughs> Just Where they're totally aren't summoners anymore. Completely and no unrelated. one knows why anyone is fighting any longer. It's a great mystery. It's now it turns into one of those like animes about fighting where at one point one of the characters inevitably yells, What are we fighting for? <laughs> Mostly happens in Gundam, I believe. It's the pointless violence that takes place in Summoner's Rift. Right, like this one, man. What Top an, lane. What an unenlightened world Runeterra is. Apparently. Except for Piltover, they're very enlightened, but only in a book sense. <laughs> they don't really have the street smarts going for them. And Duke's going to recall here. Pick up some stuff already out of pots. And watch. Looking for an opportunity here on the Faker. Doesn't find it, though. Yeah. Oh, well, Faker has healed this game, and we know that SK Telecom likes to run double AD compositions, but I really prefer when they run it with something like Rumble in the top side, instead of yeah. all inning on all this attack damage. Uh, they do have so many ways to buff with the Blood Boil, with the Eye of the Storm from Janna, but even so, the Thorn Mail is going to be ridiculously effective <laughs> against SK Telecom. I mean, absurdly effective. So again, with this composition, you have to strike early or you lose. Basically, the siege has to work, and Najin should have enough wave clear that I'm not entirely confident that it is going to work here. We'll see. Wolf with the Fnatic Janna skin. After MSI, I guess he <laughs> wants to channel a little bit of the power of Yellow Star into his play. <laughs> He's got to get some roaming on then. Yep. You can do that on Janna. Wolf has done that on Janna. Many times. Well, so far, though, a couple little gank attempts here and there, but mostly farming and Faker already jumping out to a little bit of a CS lead over Goon. <laughs> yep, just eat it. Eat it all, Marin. Marin just being as annoying as possible right there. You can see this CS differential. This is what Nunu does to Elaine. <laughs> he is useless late game. Nunu's a champion that will do nothing at six items, like nothing at all besides buff 80 carries, which fortunately SKT has two of, but he will deny the other top laner from being very useful just to being a massive bully laner. I see you're unfamiliar with full AP Aram <laughs> Nunu, Monty. He uh, does quite a bit. Yeah, his uh, one spell that does damage is truly awesome. Yep, sure is. Hey, his snowball does a respectable amount if you go full AP. That's what I was referring to, was his snowball. Oh, well, his ult does a lot, too. That's two spells. Yeah, I think it's uh, be pretty unlikely for him to get a full channel ultimate off with all that crowd control on Najin. Probably not. <laughs> it's true. So he only, in this case, has one spell that does damage. It will be funny to see. Someday, perhaps, we will see Marin build full AP. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we said they need some AP damage. Why not now? Get Rod of Ages. Go for it. That's right. Go for it, Marin. I believe in you. Rod of Ages into Death Cap. Standard. I'd like to see Luton's Echo just so <laughs> yeah. that snowball just ripples out. Proc off the snowballs. Because that's the only spell you can <laughs> use Luton's <laughs> with on Nunu. Oh, Faker. Going way up on the goon, but uh, really kind of paying for it, taking a lot of damage. Oops. That was maybe a little bit over eager. But Faker just really trying to dominate this lane like he did before, and it's not working quite as well this time. Meanwhile, Watch goes for this early dragon, but Tom, I think, is going to scout this out. Oh, wow, this is so dangerous. Dragon's a lot more powerful than it was oh, previously. No. He's not going to see it quite yet, but yeah, Watch, Watch can't kill it. Uh, but did he not? He get saw the it with notes? the tremor sense, I believe. Possibly, but he may have gone under. He may have gone under to to heal right there, and then backed off after seeing Tom with the tremor sense. I we didn't have the camera on watch right there. Could be. 
Either way, yeah. Pretty tough to take the dragon that early post changes. We are in 5.9 now. So that dragon is a bit more powerful. Still, yeah, that is, that's still a really hard dragon to get early on. Yeah. That watch doesn't seem to be slowed down too much by it, though. All right, well, early blue buff, uh, well, not early blue buff, second blue buff, I just should say, uh, being handed off right here to Goo. So this will continue some pressure on that lane. Not really sure what Faker's plan is here. Obviously, he's going to go for that Muramana first and then move to armor penetration from there and just be a poking machine. Yep. As you are with Varus. It's a little bit of damage right there to Goon, but Goon's shields do make this lane just a little more difficult to deal with. Yeah, all in all, it's going to be pretty annoying for SKT to do the same thing they did last game. They're simply not going to be able to do the same thing they did last game, I'd imagine. But so the question is, for me, I mean, when does Marin start to leave this lane? When does he start to kind of move around the map and help his team try to take objectives? Uh, that's a great question. I, I mean, he does have that CS lead, but it, it comes down to the item breakpoints too. Bang has to, it's about power spikes with this composition. If your grouping and sieging doesn't work and you don't take towers quickly, as soon as you hit one or two items, mm -hmm. whoa then you're just going to lose the game. Yeah. That's why I'm not a big fan of what SK Telecom is doing. I feel that it's pretty risky, but it'll be funny to watch and see if they can actually pull it off. <laughs> They'll get style points at any rate. And it's always fun to see Faker on a new champion. He always manages to do things you didn't think were possible on said champion. <laughs> He's got this habit. So we'll see. I mean, Varus doesn't seem like a very flashy champion, you know, when you think about it. You just never know what this guy's going to do. It's the arrow skill shots. His ult's hard to hit at least, so maybe he'll have a nice one of those. It's not as hard to hit as it used to be. They increased the missile width a couple patches ago. That's true. Yeah. I don't play AD carry a lot, but actually Varus is one of the ones I play more than more than others because he's pretty easy. <laughs> that's that's right. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend that I think he's really cool or something. I just think he's easy. <laughs> that's all. I play Caitlyn and Varus. Yep. <laughs> that's it. Smart. Sometimes Graves. There you go. Yeah. Nailed it. Got it. If I have to play ADC, it's a plan. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jinx, too. Just walk up and attack stuff. Occasionally just panic, shoot some traps out. Yep, that's right. And so, Marin and Duke involved in the annoying new new conflict where he gets a free heal from his consume and then a his free spell, so he just autos a bunch of stuff constantly and then walks up and snowballs you like a jerk. Yep, and he's been able to jerk his way up to a 20 CS lead. <laughs> let's, not, let's not put it that way. Be a, be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not say it like that, though. Sure. Hey, man, I don't know where your mind's at right now. I'm just trying to, just trying to make things interesting, you know? You, well, you definitely are. Mission okay. successful. Mission accomplished. Break out the banner. <laughs> this lane is wonderful. Yep, that's really annoying. <laughs> it's not the most fun to watch either. I wonder if he's going to go for right slow. Oh, here we go. Alt on the goon. He is not making it out. First blood goes to Tom. Only because Faker couldn't fire his arrows fast enough. Wow, Tom didn't even have to flash for that, so I'm really curious how he got that far into lane to use that ability. No kidding, it seemed like he just sort of walked up. Oh, Weirdly Q. enough. He's gonna take a bunch of damage right there. Oku going for a pretty greedy build here, but not too much damage on his turret yet. Avarice Blade will be the choice. Needs that gold. Ooh. Nice dodge from Bang. Oh, knock up onto Pure. So the poking really starting to intensify for SKT. They've got that pressure down in bot lane and Faker Able to get a decent amount of damage on that mid lane turret now. With yeah, Paris. he has to, though, is the thing. He absolutely has to. Whoa, Warren is going to get tossed back into the tower right there. Eh, wow, no that's a deal. lot of turret shots, actually. Oh, jeez. Oh, Marin. Flash. Oh, man. And Duke gets a 1v1. You know, Nunu, surprisingly, <laughs> not the best duelist <laughs> in the top lane. He's going for Rod of Ages. <laughs> wow, he is. He's actually doing it. He's doing the AP Nunu. Okay. Well. Nice. I like it. I like it. 
He'll go Rod of Ages into tank, but sure. I, I mean, Righteous Glory would have been pretty silly with that catalyst as well. well I, what else do you build on a top yeah, Muni, you know? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Teleporting Fro back in the Frozen lane. Heart is really good on Nunu. True, true. Here comes Ooh. Goon. Coming down, yep, but Bang and Wolf already on the disengage, so they won't have any issues with that. Faker picked up a Brutalizer before he picked up his pickaxe, so just doing a little bit more damage there. Giant yeah. arrow. Oh. Giant disappointment. <laughs> yeah, Goong is playing back right here. I really would like to know how that gank in mid lane happened, but... I think we saw it, man. He just walked up and hit him with his ult. Yeah. Well, I wonder if Faker landed his ult first, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're probably right, actually. That makes a lot of sense when you think about it what Varus's ult does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so SK Telecom gonna go for their first dragon right here, just taking it very fast. Yep. Easy. Early dragon shouldn't be a problem at all. Marin yeah. actually wandering down from the top side. As Duke just continues to farm out this lane. That kill was absolutely huge for Duke right here. Yep, top lane Nunu. Really the MVP so far it's so of this bad. game. <laughs> He just ate one of those wolves <laughs> in one bite. That was amazing. Oh, hi. Uh, throw a house at Marin while he comes back and eats a cannon minion. Yep. Well. So that CS lead dwindled a little bit as a result of that kill, too. So about a 1,000 gold lead for SK Telecom right now. Not anything that Najin has to worry about. And it's about the next about 10 minutes of this game to see whether SK Telecom is actually going to be able to feasibly win this game or not because they're going to need a large gold lead. Yeah, they're they're on their way, but just barely at this point. <laughs> on their way in that they have a lead at all. But Faker might be able to just kill the uh, turret that's right here. huge. Yeah. Huge. If he can get the turret on this wave, that's going to okay. free up a lot. He probably could have, but that would have been a little bit of an overcommitment with well, he had Pure a, nearby. Yeah, he had a ward right yeah. there, so he knew Pure was coming in. But that's going to buy perhaps enough time. We'll see yep. what oh, he actually gets. Tom coming in, and Duke just hops his way out of that one. A nice arrow. Not too much to be gained right there. Goong now has to play more aggressively on this minion wave to prevent it from hitting the turret and for Faker to get the one or two auto attacks that it will take yeah. to eliminate that tower. Probably is just like one at this point. Yeah, they're very, very close. You know, I feel like Varus can drop that bow. I don't think it's actually part of his hand. I have no idea. I'd have to double check. I'm not 100% sure, but I'd have to reread the lore, you know? Oh, oh wow, nice on the bang. Yeah, pure. Oh, the flay dodge with the flash, though. And pure uses that box and doesn't hit anybody. A lot of damage onto him from the culling Still via bang. Got that, got the flash out with just the death sentence right there. Did burn the ignite, but... Got the flash from Wolf as well. Yeah, very nicely done. On that hook, on the dash from bang. And now watch playing around the mid lane because they need to keep Faker back at this point. They're desperately trying to clear out some of these vision wards so that Faker can't actually continue to push up as aggressively. They've saved that turret for a surprisingly long time now, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been a lot of focus, but what happens when that focus has to inevitably shift somewhere else, you know? I mean, this lane and bot lane is going to be pushing forward at some point. Everyone's standing on a ward now. That doesn't help. Uh, you can see right there, Duke is just building pretty much only magic resistance at this point, which could be a problem, considering that uh, everyone is actually be going to be dealing damage. That is kind of an odd commitment to magic resistance. The uh, the Merc Tread and the Cowl doesn't surprise me. The additional Negatron Cloak on top of that yeah. surprises me. Because you wonder what he's going to build out of that, you know? Or if he's just going to sell them a little bit. We'll see. A lot of action down in the bot lane. Looks like Najin may be able to actually claim the first turret of the game. They do. They will. That's huge that they get the first tower right here. Yeah. And they got it off of that play from Pure dealing enough damage and scaring SK Telecom enough to recall so that this Jinx could get some time with the tower in minigun form alone. So that's going to be very useful. Now, will they sacrifice mid for it? 
Whoa. Oh, if Faker had hit that, man, that would have been a dead Lulu. Either way, it's a dead turret. And that's still a dead Lulu, maybe. Wild Growth having to be used to keep Goong alive. That's such a good trade for Najin, though. Trading one for one at this stage of the game is huge, especially on a tower that was pretty much guaranteed dead anyway. To take one away from SK Telecom that was still pretty far up there in health, health is really, really nice. Right. And now they're going to shift that bottom lane to the top, and OQ and Pure can start working on this new new lane. Oh, bring in OQ. Can he grab him? They get the flash actually out of Marin. Yeah, has to be used right there just because of the aggressive play. And now they're going to maybe get another turret right now. Uh, Lucian's already there, so he will be able to clear it out. But Marin's going to get a long lane to farm up and get even tankier. Yeah. He's going for a Hex Drinker actually next. Wow. Because <laughs> why not? Well, what Notch is trying to do is just elongate this laning phase if they can. Oh, there we go. Faker with the ult on the Goon. Can he win the 1v1? Faker whimsied, taking a lot of damage. There's a wild growth. Goon's got this one. And Goon wins the 1v1 against Faker. I mean, he has Ignite. Yeah, so he does. Faker way too far up right there, deciding not to use the flash. Had the heal, but that's it. And this is all coming undone right now. The power spike for SK Telecom is rapidly waning. They've traded evenly during this period and even found themselves a bit behind as Watch Pure and OQ roll through the topside river. Well, Lulu and is. The, what they're trying to do right here, uh, as we take Let's a look at this 1v1 again, so Faker yeah. hits Goog, and, but he gets immediately turned into a little kitten. And then Goog just walks up and Cloud grows and kills him. So that actually wasn't very exciting. Well, Lulu is a pretty good matchup against Varus, so that's not the yeah, biggest shot. a shock. solid pick. Yeah. This is why picking the Varus early is somewhat dangerous. Yeah. So, in terms of Duke's itemization, if we look at the Home Guard and the Hex Drinker, what they really just want to do right now is continue to punish this Nunu and have Nar push the Nunu up repeatedly. And then that way, SK Telecom can't group with the Nunu and the Blood Boil doesn't get onto their 80 carries, meaning the Nunu does absolutely nothing in this game. Mm -hmm. So Duke's going to return to the top side because Dragon is live and push up on that tier one. And then they'll probably go back just to right, having him in the new new lane one more time. Now Faker just trying to poke out Najin as much as he can before going back into the mid lane. But SKT may need to give this one up. They need to make something happen. Now they have the yeah. poke to poke them off the dragon. SKT probably should get this dragon. Well, the Varus ult is really good if Faker can land it too. Yes. They, this early in the game, Najin probably shouldn't be able to contest this very effectively. It's just all the shields, like everything Najin has is so good against this Varus. Oh, but Faker has so much mana right yeah. now with that stacked up tier. And you can see Lucian just pushing the tier two in the mid lane while they keep on poking. And the Kulig can come in as well. Najin, risky. Duke says he's in a good place with his Gnar bar though. Yeah, that's right. He'll become Meganar in just a moment here. A little bit of poke coming in for Faker. Can Tom steal this dragon? Yes, he can. He gets it. Pure going very low as well. Now Faker getting a huge ult onto the enemy team. A big ult comes in from Tom as well. And SKT finds exactly the fight they were looking for. OQ over the wall comes bang for another one. Faker gets the kill anyway. And now Duke and Pure. Goong as well in a lot of trouble under turret. Faker poking so hard with those arrows. Gets crap though. Everybody all in on the Faker. But Bang gets a kill anyway. Faker's still getting away. Goon taken down by Wolf. A bit of bloodthirsty support action there. And Duke, the last man standing, but perhaps not for long. We'll see if he can get himself executed on a turret. Nope. Nope. Not going to happen. Oh, right into Wolf. Come on. Double kill for the support. Feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So in the end, SK Telecom aces Najin and they get the dragon, they get five kills out of it. SKT, well, find now, a way. Now they got their 4K lead that they needed because yeah. Najin decided to fight a second dragon that they absolutely did not have to go for. And if you look right here, they're fighting right in SK Telecom's power spike. They had done such a good job of getting rid of it before Faker hits a really nice Varus ultimate. Yeah. But look at the poke coming in. These two 80 carries just melt through. Remember, Duke has no armor right now. 
There's no way that they can actually contest against two blood boiled 80 carries at this phase of the game. They just needed to, to extend the laning phase. Yeah. Really poor dragon call, but you can see how powerful this composition is in the power spike that they've got. Nice just, flash from Faker at the end to keep himself alive. Yeah, they just absolutely murdered Najin. Yep. Uh, more action going on right now. Uh, they caught top for the moment. Faker threw out, out, he threw out his ult. That's hard to say. I'm never using that sentence again. Oh, Tom gets grabbed. Makes it away, though. Oh! <laughs> Good thing Sejuani is a tanky boar. Well, now, with all of the armor penetration that SK Telecom has on Faker, they should just be able to push up right here, keep on moving Ooh. through these towers as they've had that opportunity to grow. Wow, that's yeah. a crit. Well, Duke has no armor. Yeah. Duke has a cloth armor right now. What the hell is he going to do? That just, that arrow wasn't even charged for very long, so. That means that Faker could be doing even more right now. Yeah, Varus is fun once you get a lot of damage on him. Wow, yeah. Nidalee Spear 2.0, potentially. Pretty much. Yeah. It's just astonishing to me that Najin would accept that fight. It was only the, going to be SKT's second dragon. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing, is that that was like the only way that SKT yes. could really come yes, back. Yes, Najin, Najin had done, Najin had done so well. Yeah. And they could have just traded for the uh, tier one and top side as well. Just kept Nar up there. Well, Baron started by SKT as Faker takes down the top lane turret and just keeps pushing. Here comes Najin, though. They're going to need Faker to come back here. They disengage. Duke about to become Meganar. So SKT trying with a Baron opportunity, but no, not with that Meganar around. Yeah, not too now safe. Najin is going to group his five in the mid lane, try and take something in return for that top lane tower, but they are so far behind in gold now after that fight. Well, they just need to worry about getting Bear assaulted as well here, too. Culling clears out that wave. That turret still has more than health, half of its health remaining. And here comes Faker with the Yomu's Gold Blade, actually. Yeah, build that, build that <laughs> passive up, man. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, might as well use that extra Brutalizer for something. I was going to say, yeah. Now that it doesn't to. turn into a Black Cleaver any longer. Yep. So he'll be able to take down turrets really quickly with that. Yes, he will. Wow. Well, Faker certainly has shown us the poking and team fight utility that Varus offers. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's a bad pick in certain matchups. It's just Najin completely messed up this game, and SK Telecom took precisely the fight they should have. Yep. He's kind of waiting for it. Wolf just going to clear out another ward in the Baron pit. They've got the pink there. Well, Watch finally has some armor. Going for the Randuin's Open now, and Duke finishing up his Warden's Bail, but with Faker already with the Last Whisper, and Bang going to complete it imminently, they're just ahead of the curve on armor penetration versus armor. Yeah, very true. Now, if Najin can somehow stall things out until like the ultra late game. Oh yeah, they're fine. Yeah, they do they're okay. Fine. But right now, SKT just with a huge threat. I mean, they can bait this Baron all day because they know they can win team fights. Najin might try this here though. Baron going down very, very quickly. Faker just zoning with that hail of arrows. A lot of damage onto Pure. Watch comes in. Baron's still a bit low. Watch takes the lantern out again. Alt gets used. Doesn't really connect too much with anybody. Baron taken by SKT. And do they pursue for the fight? There's the culling. They get the kill onto Duke. And I think SKT can be pretty satisfied with just that. Yeah, that was actually a very well done dra uh, Baron by SK Telecom. Yeah. Great timing on Tom's ultimate to keep Rek'Sai over the wall after the Lantern was backing out, making sure that Watch couldn't flash it and try and smite it. Yep. And this poke from SKT, combined with the Baron buff, there is just no stopping them now. Not for the next couple minutes, anyway. And Marin, you know, well, he's not going to do any damage. He is tanky enough to sit in there and take some hits, at least as they take out this first inhibitor. Wow, OQ just gets really low from another Varus arrow. Yeah. Uh, SK Telecom just nailing their aggression while they have the opportunity and going ahead and snowballing this game with the early Baron take. And the third Dragon now, too. Completely unopposed. And it's got to feel bad if you're not. You had the game right where you wanted it, and then you just gave it away.
They were in such a good space. Yep. A uh, less than a thousand gold deficit in some harder lanes. They should have known that the only good space is on <laughs> CJ right now. <laughs> that was their first mistake, Monty. Jeez. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yeah, they traded the tower as well. I mean, it, it was all looking so good. And so maybe after this game, we can say competitively, professionally, Faker is undefeated on Varus. That's something we're almost certainly going to be able to say at this point. Yep. Given the 9,000 gold lead of the Baron that they have. Helps quite as, a bit. As well as a, just such a powerful siege composition. Yeah. And how does Najin engage here? They, they really can't. They don't have great flanking champions. They I have to basically do cast the teleport. Well, the big part of it, too, is that they kept uh, both Gragas and Sejuani away from watch. You know, this Rek'Sai can make picks, but it's just not as great at, at uh, doing what the other champions could do for Najin in a team fight. Well, they also took away, if you'll notice, they took away the two hard-engaged junglers to yeah. run this. They took Gragas and Sejuani away. Yep. So at, at this point, Rek'Sai doesn't have that same engage potential. Uh, neither does a champion, obviously, like Nunu, which was also taken in the end. And another turret just easily taken by SK Telecom. Najin cannot really defend this. Yep, we'll see if there's any sort of desperation fight. Pushback for now as a minion wave gets a little bit low. Wow, man. Faker's just doing so much damage now. Man, this is, it is Nidalee Spear 2.0. That's what it happens is, when Varus gets to this level. It is like watching Faker play Nidalee. Yeah, it is. And he's so accurate with these two, obviously. Another one. Like any good Varus would be. And the second inhibitor taking a lot of damage. These arrows, there's just nothing Najin can do against it. Oh, he said his last four in a row. Arrowed. Definitely arrowed. Yep. Oh, so you had to say it. You had to say it, so he had to miss one. You slow people with the halo of arrows, and then you can hit them pretty easily too, but no, take a big chunk out of pure instead. SKT just sort of having a bit of a vacation, and now just, there we go, the ultimate onto pure. Faker gonna be able to maybe get a kill there. Wild Girl saves him, but Tom comes in with the big Sejuani ult, and now SKT, they've got the ults, they've got the double kill onto Varus, and they've got everything he needs. Make that a triple kill, wow. Duke just barely living through that one, and that is it. A 2-0 for SK Telecom, and Faker bringing the Varus in the mid lane and bringing the pain. That is it. GG. That last team fight was so beautifully played. And one thing you can say about SK Telecom is they're really good at that varus Sejuani synergy. Because oh, yeah. Tom's chaining of the Glacial Prison after the Chain of Corruption hit was really beautiful right there. Yeah, just letting the veteran, letting Faker decide, you know, when the best time to start the engage would be, and then after the chains are done, then the ice comes in. Wow.